I'm Roger Anderton. I've sort of uh, been investigating uh, science and physics for a long time, trying to make out sense of things. And it's the history of it is kind of ends up getting very fascinating because it's so weird. And Einstein seems to be now being used as a massive diversion from the direction that physics was going in uh, from the Copernican Revolution. So I managed to, really the direction of physics should have taken us more, sort of more along the lines of what Tesla has been doing. So sort of, uh, I've got uh, pictures of Tesla, sort of in a magazine here, it's Tesla. Uh, so in the country where Tesla came from, um, which is sort of Serbia, Croatia area, he's sort of famous. And there's also another famous scientist in that, from that area, and his name's uh, Roger Boscovich. So I got this, and Roger Boscovich wrote this book called The uh, Theory of Natural Philosophy. And that really modern physics should be paying more attention to what Roger Boscovich is talking about. And it's just sort of like a continuation of uh, physics after uh, Newton. You sort of, you've had after Galileo and Kepler and so forth, you had Newton. Newton wrote his book, and then the Catholic Church had to reconsider what they'd done to Galileo. And so the top man who was in charge of looking at the science was this person called Roger Boscovich. He was a Catholic priest, but also a scientist. And so it with Einstein, it's sort of like Einstein came along and then it was sort of like a massive diversion onto what Einstein was talking about and really it should be a continuation from Newton to Boscovich and to other people like that. So that's what I've managed to dig out from history. And so I've sort of done a website where I've put down this uh, alternative sort of version of history one which is emphasising the importance of uh, Boscovich and other people who have worked on similar ideas. Because Einstein is sort of like uh, diverted attention. So I don't really know what direction they're going next, but uh, with the sort of history, if you tick picking it up from Einstein, it's sort of Einstein wrote his. Uh, papers on relativity and on what became quantum physics and atomic physics and mainly this was in 1905 and he never cited any references from what he was working from and so the way the mainstream then treats that is oh it's a new starting point for physics and then they concentrate on that and they kind of like divert attention from what was earlier with people like Boscovich. But with Einstein, he, he then said famously, uh, God does not play dice with the universe. And we, what he was trying to say was, he was disagreeing with the direction that quantum mechanics was going in. And it, after having disagreed with the direction quantum mechanics was going in by people like Niels Bohr and Heisenberg, they decided to ignore him. We saw it like he then got sidelined on, uh, from mainstream physics. Mainstream physics suddenly sidelined Einstein, and Einstein's his kind of research was then forgotten about to a large extent. But you, but you still have people that were uh, working along the lines of uh, what Einstein was talking about as 
research into unified field theory. And so one of the people is sort of uh, David Bohm. And he was sort of, uh, he died in 1992, he was born in 1917. And he was sort of uh, interested in researching unified field theory. So he was kind of carrying on uh, what, uh, <coughs> what Einstein was doing. The next, but the problem he had was the Americans didn't treat him, they treated him as an American, they took, viewed him as a communist. So, with all this kind of like uh, problem they had with McCarthy, witch hunt, and all that sort of thing, they had David Bohm, and he was not getting not liked from the American authorities because they viewed him as a uh, communist so he got sidelined as well so you basically have this tradition of people working on unified field theory and it's outside the mainstream and it's got sidelined it's sort of like an alternative version of history and of course when I trace back the history of it it does go all the way back to again Roger Boscovich it's sort of unified field theory tradition seems to start, start with him and carries on and so after, only more fairly recently, I found out that uh, David Bohm had a, was sort of mentor to this person, um, who's a Pierre VAJ. I don't know if I can say that correctly, but this person then gets uh, conferences uh, in his honour for physics people, but this is outside of the mainstream physics again. So you've got people outside the mainstream physics working on the unified field theory tradition, and it's not getting any sort of uh, attention so much in the mainstream. And sort of like one of the big men that comes out from this sort of tradition who's still alive at the moment is this person here, who's a Myron Evans. He's a hot-headed, I think, Welshman. So, I've got all this sort of like tradition of people who've worked on what is, I think, uh, related to Tesla and his unified field theory. And you get people like this, who's with Baranski, who was working on the death ray, which, which sounds very tr similar to what uh, Tesla was talking about, one of Tesla's things, but these people, a lot of these people just get ignored by the mainstream physics community. So that's basically what I found out, and I, I traced the history all the way back to what's going on, that there's people who seem to be in authority, and they seem to kind of like, like to rewrite history all the time. So there's this version of history of a physics tradition from on unified field theory and the mainstream well we don't they don't decide they don't want to pay any attention to that and it's kind of cast out and discarded and so what gets taught to physics students isn't this tradition anymore and so the further you look into this tradition the more murky it gets and of course you get this idea that the people at the top go into the real big money and they control everything decide what kind of things they want to tell ordinary people. A lot, so, of, a lot of the physics was diverted uh, from what people like Tesla were doing and Tesla was saying lots of strange things um, which we now talk about in terms of things like free energy and death rays and things like that but he also was thinking that he had um, uh, what were signals from aliens, radio signals and so I've pointed out that in my, one of the things I got published in a UFO online thing, that what SETI are doing are ignoring certain signals which are really uh, in alien intelligence signals. And they sort of like, that's another way things are getting blocked. If, if you're with Tesla's physics, you've got things like what they call longitudinal waves and scalar waves and so forth, and it's something which the mainstream have a block on as understanding. 
And so when they're getting people who are getting this sort of thing on their radio, telescopes and things, they're ignoring it. It's being blocked. So I've pointed this out. It's sort of like block, block this way of understanding uh, physics and it's sort of, he's censored the physics, what is taught. So he's censored the physics which is being taught, General Groves. And so now they've censored that physics, they're, they're refusing to consider things which should be interpreted as aliens and dismissing it. Sort of more information is on my website about that sort of thing. And so it's just this question of easily blocking the uh, UFO things as by dismissing the science upon which it is based. You just put a block on that science. You don't accept it. You just put a block on it. And so when when the scientists, a mainstream scientists, say that's a proof, well, they've already blocked considering that sort of avenue of research. It was in the, it was in lived in the 18th century. The main book he wrote was uh, this one, the Theory of Natural Philosophy. So you're picking up physics theory from this person. What you found, what you find with the, what was the Copernican revolution, which you had Copernicus, you had Galileo, you had Kepler, and then, then people like Newton. Next step on would have been Boscovich. And Boscovich was a Catholic priest, and what he was doing was reconsidering uh, what they'd done to Galileo, because the, ca the Catholic, uh, uh, the, the Catholic, uh, well, the, the Pope, and the Inquisition and all that had uh, persecuted Galileo, as it's known, and, and they, they put him under house arrest, and they were disapproving of what Galileo was saying. And so you had the issue of after Galileo, Newton coming along in in, in England, and having similar things to to what Galileo was talking about, and so you had to have the Catholic Church had to reconsider what they did to Galileo. They had to consider whether they were going to go with uh, Newton's physics. And the person that managed to get uh, Newton's physics accepted by the Catholic Church, the main man seems to have been this person, Roger Boscovich. He was sort of their expert. And so the Catholic, pro, pro, Catholic Church, despite blocking Galileo, had then started to accept Newtonian physics as something to be taught in Catholic countries. And it's sort of like a revision to things. And if you look at the history further back, the existing physics before the Copernican Revolution was this idea of the Earth being the centre of the universe. And from a religious point of view, that was Earth at the centre, the heavens above and God looking down from the heavens. Now it's looking at it from a religious point of view. And so when you were talking about, oh no, it's, it's, it's not that way around, that the earth and the sun are moving in the sort of way that Copernicus talked about, really about a common centre of gravity. When you've got that going on, where the earth is not absolutely stationary, it's relative motion between the sun and the earth and it's not that picture of God above with the heavens you've got the a crisis because even though we think this is wrong nowadays the people who believe this had a, a world view which made sense to them the world made sense to them by thinking about it like this they were here on earth and above them was God and the heavens and when people were sort of reporting that angels were coming down from heaven, that made sense to them from this point of view. But you suddenly think, well, the Earth is a planet like other planets, and the other planets are up here, then what we're calling angels might be creatures, aliens, like or 
entities like ourselves, but living on the planet. You suddenly have this crisis where we, what we're calling angels might be aliens. And we're not unique in the universe. With this model, we are unique. We are here on Earth, we are human beings. We are the center of God's attention. And these things out here are angels. But suddenly, they're not angels under the revision. Suddenly, they could be aliens. And we're just one of many aliens out there. One, well, species. And it's a crisis. It's, it's what I call an existential crisis. And I, I think it is still the crisis we're suffering from at the moment in, in uh, science. They don't want to accept information about UFOs. And people sort of like claim to have encounters of aliens. They want to dismiss that. They don't want, they don't want to accept that. And, and when it comes to the actual science, which came from the uh, Copernican revolution, where it's suddenly a revision where where the Earth is not the centre of the universe. They, didn't, they don't want to accept the natural progression from Copernicus Revolution that there are aliens out there. So when it comes to eyewitnesses account of things like aliens or not like, well, eyewitnesses account in the medieval times of angels coming down from heaven. No, we, we can ignore that as superstition. And when it comes now to, well, maybe they should be interpreted as aliens. We can dismiss that as well. We don't. It's sort of like it's a kind of dogma of the science that they've fostered upon us. And two of the most prominent ones were Nobel Prize winners in physics, and they were disagreeing with Einstein. So what were their names? It was sort of a, uh, I've forgotten their names at the moment, but but they were saying they were disagreeing with Einstein. And unfortunately, it then gets involved in the Hitler-Nazi movement. Suddenly, if you were going to be uh, anti-Einstein's physics, you're kind of like getting criticised then of being anti-Semitic, you, that you've been accused of racism. And so this whole line of physics on that side of things got um, mirrored in In, in being accused of racism. So people who were saying that they didn't believe in Einstein's relativity were being accused of being uh, anti-Semitic. And so it's another way that they used to block things. You can't, it's all sort of like a brainwashing, a mental um, conditioning. It's sort of like you read Einstein's relativity and think, well, this doesn't really make any sense. But then if you say it doesn't make sense, rather than address those issues that it doesn't make sense, the people who want to believe it then start accusing you of some sort of hate crime. And so you're kind of blocking the discussion of the physics just purely on the physics. You're diverting attention onto the emotional side of things. It's, it's quite horrible and terrible. That, that, that's one thing that happened. But you've still got people who are saying that Einstein is wrong. And one of the films is this one by, um, called uh, Einstein Wrong, The Miracle Year. And you still got people who are looking at the physics of Einstein and not agreeing with it. And this person made this documentary film. And when he tried to get it shown at the film festivals, he found himself blocked. And I reckon it, the reason he gets blocked is because these people, Einstein's got this massive fan club of people and they don't want people to say Einstein is wrong, they, so they just block you. So you've got this massive fan base who are just going to block you anyway. And it's all based on emotions. You can't really address the physics because you've got people emotionally committed to thinking Einstein is a genius. But then, as I say, in the higher levels of uh, mainstream physics, they decided to ignore Einstein on quantum physics, but agree with him on relativity theory. So it's kind of a dogma. Einstein's right about relativity, but wrong about quantum physics. 
and that's the dogma. And to be able to switch it around the other way and say Einstein has got a lot wrong with relativity and to say that Einstein was probably right about quantum physics, which is the alternative, it's very difficult to then get that sort of voice heard. It's something which is sidelined from the mainstream point of view. It's an alternative view which is not going to be accepted. It just, the mainstream just wants to promote their dogma as one point of view. And then they block everything such as, such as films like that. They block it because they're promoting their dogma. For their point of view, sci they want science to have only one point of view. It's not like politics where you've got two different pol political parties. They just want to promote one point of view. It's a, do it's, um, it's a dictatorship. When there's an alternative to what they're saying, they don't want to allow that and they block it. So if you're taking it from Einstein, taking it from Einstein, there was a lot of people disagreeing what Einstein was saying. Uh, when he, Einstein became famous in 1919 and with the uh, so say observation. This is a book on Boscovich and I've translated it from uh, Dr uh, Dragoslav Stogovic, who's a retired chemist in Serbia, because Boscovich is coming from sort of area of the world, the same area as Tesla, and so far the mainstream in the West have managed to ignore this sort of thing. What, what the people over in Serbia or Croatia and that sort of area build, they sort of like they ignore what they know. And when I went over to uh, went over to Serbia, I was wondering why don't the people they do the people in Serbia know about the physics community do know about Boscovic a bit more detail than the people in the America and in England. But I thought, it's like, why don't they know about it in more detail? And, and what I found out was that the um, people, because it used to be behind the Iron Curtain, these people, they are learning physics from America. They're going by American physics textbooks. And so because the American physics textbooks are ignoring people like Boscovich and Tesla and so forth, what the standard education to a physics student in these countries is pretty much along the same lines as America and England. That they're ignoring it as well. Because I would have thought, well, you go to their country and they would have been taught a different version of physics, promoting their national heroes, but they don't. They're going by what America is telling them. And I think the reason they're going by America is America became a superpower and demonstrated that it was able to make an atomic bomb. So when it comes to physics, you say, well, America's proven itself. We need to know what America knows. So it became more a question of following what America was saying about physics, rather than paying attention to any of their national uh, physics heroes, and science, physics and other science heroes. So what we got with, um, Einstein, is, he seems to be set up as a diversion from what physics was before him. They've taken it up from him. And the person that seems to have started that is um, General Groves. General Groves is in charge of the Manhattan Project, which was the um, building the atomic bomb, the American atomic bomb. And so, you think, well, yeah, he was in charge of that. He had all these scientists who were in charge of, and they, he had to get them to uh, organise to work out how to build the atomic bomb. And the way General Groves decided to do it was to compartmentalise information. So if you were a scientist, you were working on a specific problem, you weren't knowing the context of that within the bigger context of the atom bomb yeah so you would concentrate on one specific problem other person was concentrating another problem and so forth but you weren't seeing the full picture you were just uh, compartmentalized 
onto certain things. And the idea of that was that if it was less chance of the information leaking out as to the full information on how to build an atomic bomb. If you were going to leak, you were only leaking on a small bit of information that you knew about. So that was the idea of that. He also he had the idea because um, physics before this was a pretty much open domain to people. You could write articles and there was no sort of censorship on what you were writing about. But suddenly physics was becoming having military um, significance. It had military importance and so suddenly you were wanting to censor certain physics things. And so what he did was he went through all the um, physics journals that had been published with where well, he got his people to do it for him, went through it and they were kept taking out things that were considered military sensitive which had implications for secrets for the atom bomb. And so he went through all that, physics was being censored, existing physics articles that had been published were censored. And also, having done that, he was, they were then censoring any new articles that had been published. And so I think as part of that censorship, he would have liked to censor this person, Sir Roger Boscovich. He would have liked to censor that, but he couldn't because it was too deeply ingrained into history. And the history was, atomic physics is really coming from this person. Modern atomic physics comes from this person. Because if you trace the idea back to the ancient Greeks, they had this idea that matter was built out of atoms. But what type of atom? And the type of atom that finally came about was from this person, which was as a point particle. So modern atomic physics is based upon this idea of point particles. And that was sort of initiated by Roger Boscovich, that, that tradition of physics. So they could, General Groves would want to cut that out, but he couldn't because it was too deeply ingrained into history. So you just then got people to ignore it. So when it comes down to the rewriting of history, they just ignore mentioning him, Roger Boscovich, to uh, physicists, physics students. They just ignore it. They don't get taught that atomic, modern atomic physics is based upon this idea of point particles coming from Roger Boscovich. It's just ignored. So when you can't cut something out of the history, when you, when you can't censor history, when there's something too big, you, sent, you just ignore it. And so this, this version of history which they're teaching physics students is sort of coming from setting up Einstein as the big man of uh, setting up uh, quantum physics and relativity and they're trying to ignore the physics that was happening before him from people like Boscovich. So with taking it from Einstein, they, they, the official point of view is Einstein is right about relativity but wrong about quantum physics. And so when it comes to the issue of unified field theory that Einstein was investigating, they've diverted people from looking at that issue. And so contrary to the mainstream, I'm going with the idea that Einstein uh, was, was, had a lot wrong with relativity theory, uh, but he was right about quantum physics. Quantum physics, the direction they were going in was wrong. And you then have people, as I say, from this group, this alternative physics people, and they're still having conferences on this. They're still investigating physics along this idea of Einstein's unified field theory. As I trace back once again to this person, Roger Boscovich, it was still based upon this idea of an extension to Newton, to this idea of a unified theory based on point particles. And the main book on that from Boscovich is this one.
So really, more attention should be paid to that. I th uh, well, what, what, what I understand is that uh, the mainstream Freemasons only recognise a certain level, and I think it's 33rd, right. and that is what they consider Freemasonry. But if you're, if you're a person who you gets to that, then you can get invited to what are lodges, which are not really officially recognised by mainstream Freemasonry. And so you can carry on getting higher degrees. And these are sort of like esoteric lodges. Yeah. And what I gather is that they, they do something like, they invite you to do the ritual, and it would be something like uh, curse and swear on at the Bible and take God's name in vain and yeah. all that sort of thing. And they say to you, do that. And if you, you refuse to do that, they say to you, you have passed the test. This was the test, you've passed the test. Oh. But you don't actually then get initiated higher up in the hierarchy. So you've got the, you're supposed to have what are Satanists at the higher levels. Don't they worship uh, a god named Jabu? I, I, I think it goes by different names, yeah. yeah. They, they, some people say it's not Satanism, it's Luciferianism. And then it's sort of, it gets very confusing as to what the feedback you get, but yeah. that seem, seems to be the main man yeah. is this Alistair Crowley, yeah. and he's sort of like, according to when you rest guess at his sort of life, he, he got initiated higher up in the Freemasonry into these hysteric uh, lodges, and yeah. so you, if you're taking it from that, it seems to be the black magicians people who do evil magic and all that sort of thing and it sort of like gets really unpleasant yeah. and, and so that's what seems to be behind it and then you've got films like this one yeah. Eyes Wide Shut yeah. if, if, if that's to be believed it's by Stanley Kubrick the, the, he died in the middle of that yeah it? exactly but it's sort of like if you, if you believe that sort of thing what they seem to have is these massive sex parties orgies and they're doing satanic rituals when they're doing that. Yeah. And it's sort of like, oh, that's unpleasant. Yeah. And you can chase it back to history further, places like the Hellfire Club. Yeah. And that seems to be a kind of satanist. It's supposed to be people like uh, Benjamin Franklin used to go to these things. Yeah. And once again, it's sex orgies with all that. I've actually been there. You've been to the... I've been there. Went to the, the caves, the cave. yeah. And that's the, uh, around, around the grounds of the church on the top, yeah. The ball on. Yeah. So it seems to be that it wasn't. It was Alistair Crowley. He was coming from that sort of tradition from the Hellfire Clubs, and you can sort of like say them like they're sort of like people like rakes. They go by different. They, you call them rakes or you call them libertarians, but basically they've got. They're throwing away moral standards, is what we consider moral standards. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. And so it's all very un deeply unpleasant. Yeah. And this is, seems to be what's at the higher levels of control in the country. And it's sort of, have you heard of somebody like Jimmy Savile? Yeah. And so, like, he he's a paedophile, and you think to yourself, how could he get away with it so long? And he must have had connections. Well, I think he was. Um, Especially the BBC is where they were protected now yeah. for decades. Uh, on uh, one trip I went to Jersey and we saw that, that uh, children's home. Yeah. That uh, they had a little dead body buried <laughs> yeah. around it. It's very, very right. distinct. And it, it, it's all like it just uh, breaks your mental processing as an ordinary person to think that sort of thing is going on yeah. higher up. But well, they seem to be the ones in charge. And so, there's this famous book about the Illuminati, because this is one of the names that they go by, is the Illuminati. And it's this person who is uh, Jonathan uh, Robeson, who was in 1798. And he was complaining that the Illuminati were taking over the uh, Freemasons. They were just infiltrating the Freemasons at that time, according to him. And so you get in a lot of the information about what's coming through from that. And the author, but the official sort of like 
version of the Illuminati is supposed to come from uh, this person, Adam Weishaupt. Adam Weishaupt, yeah. He was supposed to have founded the, the Bavarian Illuminati. But you seem to have lots of different groups that have gone by this sort of idea of being the enlightened ones throughout history. And whether they're all connected is a very difficult thing to ask. So, so I came from it from looking at it from this person. It's uh, Roger Boscovich, and he's he was a priest in the Catholic Church, but also interested in science. And he was in this uh, what you call Jesuits. And really, it's the Society of Jesus. It's a kind of like almost a secret society within the Catholic Church and so it's um, there's a lot of bad things said about them through history and it's really um, not a very good thing to go into but they get accused of having committed conspiracies about uh, trying to dispose heads of government or, and monarchs because they're trying to promote a Catholic uh, country all the time. If, if you've got people say like Queen Elizabeth I, she was a uh, Protestant and she was refusing to marry a Catholic prince so the Jesuits were then looking at the issue of trying to make England, the head of England, being a Catholic and so they saw so like she was always looking for conspiracies against her uh, from Catholic people and, the, and it's sort of like being coming from the Catholic uh, priests. So it's all these dirty little uh, things that are associated going on in history, or all these conspiracies going on. Sort of the Jesuit order is supposed to be formed by uh, this priest, uh, who's a, uh, what's his name? It's uh, Saint Ignatius. And really, you're looking at that, and you're saying, well, really, they, when they first formed, they were before him, sort of thing. They were a group of people who considered themselves the enlightened ones. And so you could say they were the Illuminati as well. And so they then took the name Society of Jesus. And so it's sort of like, oh, is this what they're really coming for? And so you've got this person like Adam and Weishaupt who says they forming the Barbarian Illuminati and he's coming from a Jesuit background as well. And so you're looking at all these sort of things in history and it's getting very unpleasant uh, to talk about. So, as I was saying, it's, you, you can't... It is a difficult thing to talk about all these sort of conspiracies that have been going on in history because it's sort of like that you then can get accused of promoting hatred and you don't, you don't really want to do that, but you're pointing out that there are people, groups that have their own agenda and they want to do something. And, in, and at the time you had the Jesuits and they had their agenda and they wanted to promote cap, cap the Catholic faith. So the things that they got up to was sort of like uh, a fanaticism. They were prepared to do certain things which which leads into conspiracies and you've got it's not just groups like them it's other groups as well all sort of like fighting it out fighting it out with their own agendas and, but when you look into the Christian religion you then find out from him that paganism also got incorporated into uh, Christian religion. You've got things like Jesus. The story about Jesus di dying and coming back to life and being born of a virgin and all that sort of thing. It seems to be it seems to be pagan elements that have gone into Christianity as well. And so it seems to be a representation representation of the pagan sun god religion. And so you kind of like on one level Christianity is being promoted as meaning one thing, but then you've got people who are looking at it and maybe saying, we're looking at it as something diff different at a deeper level. And so you're wondering, all these priests and that, are they 
believing the same sort of Christianity as what the normal laity are believing because they've studied it in more detail. And so you get lots of these scary stories coming back about what they're believing. And I should have brought more slides on that, but the, uh, you, you, get, you get priests, priests like Father Markley who's come out and I haven't got a slide on him, but he's come out, he's, I think he's died since, but he came out from the Catholic uh, places and was saying that many of the priests were converting to Satanism, which I, I take to mean that these priests, after learning their stuff from the Bible, are starting to take a belief in the pagan sun god religion. And so that is then again interpreted as Satanism. So it's a different level of Christianity to what normal people were looking at as Christianity. So you've got a kind of normal Christianity and a more deeper hidden meaning to Christianity, a sort of an esoteric version of it. So you've got all these horrible things going on as to what's going on at the deeper levels.